What is up, ladies and gents? It's your boy, James Leakes, bringing you guys a YouTube exclusive. I was a little bit sad after the announcement they dropped at the end of the Pokemon Presents, but I'm over it, and I forgot to check out all the details that they have on the official Pokemon website, the Full Legends Arceus website, and the Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl website. I always love to go over this information with the homies on the stream, but I want to bring that to you guys right now. I've got some theories coming into the new games that are going to be really important. I think are going to be really big for both competitive and casual. So guys, let's take a look at all the information on the website. Homies, let's start with Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. I think there's a little bit less information to talk about in here, so we'll try to get through it quickly. It comes out November 19th, of course. They say it's going to be a very faithful remake, easy to understand, because uh, keep in mind, you know, there's lots of kids that are, you know, too young and never played the original, right? So they want to make it kid-friendly, and I agree with that. But guys, let's take a look at the underground info. Have a blast in the Grand Underground, baby. It has been powered up for these games. It is now called the Grand Underground, and it is a vast subterranean world that spreads out like a maze beneath the entire Sinnoh region. The entire Sinnoh region, you say? Well, this is big, guys. Check it out. This is the map of Sinnoh, and right up here in the top right, this was the after-game content of the original Diamond Pearl Platinum games. I think it was called the Battle Resort, or that was one of the places, and that was the after-game content with, like, Stark Mountain with Heatran. Uh, you could like rebattle lots of the gym leaders on the island. It was a really cool place. It was the most exciting after game exploration you could do in Diamond and Pearl. And you guys can see that it is still here, right up there. You can see it. This map gave us that little bit of information. People were afraid if we wouldn't have the end game content, but there it is. So I'm really excited about that for sure. That's great, great, great to have that confirmed for us. But let's learn a little bit more about the underground. This is the big, big, big part of the underground. Use the Explorer Kit you'll receive during your adventure to visit the Grand Underground. Participate in activities such as digging up treasure, fossils, creating your own secret base. All very cool, but this is where it gets juicy. The Pokemon Hideaways, where you can find Pokemon that live in a variety of different environments. That's what it is here. We've got like this desert with a little bit of water, and then we've got the volcano looking region. Let's, let's, dive in. let's dive in. Pokemon hideaways come with a variety of different terrains, ranging from still water caverns, volcanic landscapes, yep, those are them, with different Pokemon living in each environment. Among the Pokemon that inhabit the center region, there are some Pokemon that only can be found in these Pokemon hideaways. And as you guys can see right here from the picture, it kind of looks like Pokemon Let's Go, right? With the Pokemon on the overworld. So I'm really excited for hopefully this could be some kind of uh, shiny hunting methods, right? With something maybe with chains. It looks like we can definitely control what kind of Pokemon up here, especially they talked about depending on what statues you have in your secret base, it will influence what Pokemon appear. So it seems like a really good controlled environment and hopefully there's going to be some cool kind of shiny hunting, shiny chaining uh, to do in these Pokemon hideaways. Then they talk about the fossils and the items. That's pretty much very faithful to the original underground where you can just pick into the wall, find gems, you take up all the treasure that you get, which is really cool. And then you can build your own secret base with these statues yada 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 and adventure with other trainers and all that good stuff so this is pretty faithful to the original uh underground system all right i think we gotta appreciate this key art look how beautiful it is talk about the super contest maybe you don't care too much about the contest but um i'm a pretty big casual pokemon fan too so i'm definitely gonna dip my feet into this but look at the idols they got the they got the glow sticks at the bottom we got the dancing dawn and ethan and the uh, yeah, dude, and Rose Raid looking, Drift Bloom looking, you know, this art's just hype. I'm actually pretty excited about it, but let's read about it just a little bit. You know, they are called Super Contest Shows, put on by four performers and their Pokemon, work together, yada, 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 and, you know, a different experience from the battle. Yeah, uh, four people can participate together. Super Contest Show categories, coolness, cuteness, beauty, toughness, and cleverness. You know, those were used with the uh, Poke Blocks, or what is it in this game? Uh, the Poffins, I believe. Um, that you feed your Pokemon and you can raise their stats and all that good stuff and uh, yeah evaluations But this is cool. Okay, it used to just be like using moves and then like some kind of boring stuff But you can check it out now. There's a visual based on how they look Maybe we can give them outfits and yeah look capsule decorations coolness beauty But then there's a dance looks like there's like gonna be a little rhythm game. I hope it's actually difficult I, I love like really hard rhythm games it's something that looks like fun But look how cute it is with Turtwig dancing around. This is gonna be pretty fun and then the move is where you use the actual attack that is, you know, connected to the category of cool, funny, smart, whatever. And then, uh, yeah, it talks about the capsules. 
capsules were in the original game. It just changes the animation when they come out. I don't know if it'll go on to online, um, but that'd be pretty cool. Capsules are always uh, a little fun bonus in the game. Of course, they added the Pokemon following behind you. Everybody loves that. Unfortunately, in Sword and Shield, it's really janky with the speeds of the Pokemon. If they're too slow, they just like lag behind teleport. It looks like they kind of fixed that. You can see in the trailer, one of the Pokemon is lagging behind a bit, but uh, it looks a little bit more controlled. I really hope it's not as jank as it is in Sword and Shield. Here they talk about that there's Wi-Fi access, of course, it is a Pokemon game in 2021, it better have it, but then, um, this is really cool, we get to customize our characters in Diamond and Pearl. I think they've really kind of started to accept that we want character customization in every single Pokemon game. I remember a long time ago in a Pokemon press conference, they were like, we don't want to reuse the same special features in games because that will take away the magic of those games, such as Pokemon following you in Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver. They didn't bring it back for a long time. I think they finally accepted, like, yo, it's 2021, 2022. We need these features in every game because we love them, and uh, I'm glad. Uh, characters are looking fresh as hell. Look at Don. Looking fresh, baby. This is a good transition, guys. Pokemon Home is going to be available in 2022 for Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, and Legends Arceus. Let's move over to Legends Arceus. So the reason I bring this up for Legends Arceus is because at the end of the Pokemon Presents yesterday, they said that ranked battles, competitive battles are still going to happen on Sword and Shield in the future. Uh, you can hear me on stream talk about why that's upsetting or why it makes sense. But anyway, it's important because check it out. We've already got Rowlet in the game, but Cyndaquil and Oshawa, those are two Pokemon, two starters we don't have access to yet in Sword and Shield. So I'm thinking with Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl and Legends Arceus, they are going to make every single Pokemon catchable in Sword and Shield. So we're going to have all 900 Pokemon. And then the new forms that we're about to go over are also going to be tradable to Sword and Shield, changing up competitive, changing up just being able to have your favorite Pokemon ever. So let's get into them. I'm really hyped. First up is Deer. This is a Stantler evolution and it's a normal psychic type we don't have its ability or anything like that unfortunately but we can read a little bit about it so let's get it a pokemon that's close with people and helps make their lives possible beautiful in the hasui region stantler can evolve into word here this pokemon has been treasured since long ago by the people of this region for whom it is indispensable it grows much larger when it evolves and garments with the fur shed from its beard tail and legs are highly prized for their top-notch protection against the cold okay Come on, they, they just said that he makes their lives possible and now we're gonna like cut off all his hair and, and hunt him to make some uh, top notch clothing. Come on, bro, that, that's our boy. But he looks, he looks fly. I don't know, but the top of his horns kind of look like a Meltan to me. That might be me going a little too deep in the, in the lore bucket, but it does. Okay, it emits psychic energy from the orbs on its antlers. Using the black orbs at the base of its antlers, this Pokemon generates unleashed the psychic energy, powerful enough to distort space. Werder searches out for safe paths by using its antlers like antennas and uh, running it, running at the head of its herd and leading young Stantler. How cute. So yeah, dude, um, Werder is pretty sick. Uh, we don't know too much. We just know the type and we know that he's in the game, but um, I'm excited for sure. Let's go to Basque Legion. Now, Basque Legion, we also don't really know too much about it, but we know that it's a water ghost. And now, Basque Legion isn't the first water ghost ever. We've had Jellicent and Frillish, but I think water ghost, it's not great defensive typing, honestly, which is kind of weird because Jellicent is a more defensive Pokemon. But water ghost offensively, I think is phenomenal. And Basque Legion looks like an offensive powerhouse to me, baby. He's mad, he's big. He could have adaptability like Vasculin uh, did, you know, before it becomes a Vascular Legion, and he would become an absolute killer, man. Let's read a little bit more about him, okay? Battling together with the mournful souls of its comrades. <laughs> Sad, dude. Vasculin in the Hisui region can evolve into this Pokemon. The evolution occurs when a Vasculin is possessed by the souls of other Vasculin from its school that could not withstand the harsh journey. Dude. This game's, this game's kind of sad, man. Basque Legion fights together with these souls, which attack opponents as if it is a will of their own. Dude, you know what, man? Whatever happens, man. If they could turn their souls into something useful, help out this other Basque then so be it, I guess. But kind of sad, man. Tremendous, unflagging physical ability. 
The moment this Pokemon senses animosity, it will become enraged, attack relentlessly until the enemy is defeated. This Pokemon gains power from the souls possessing it, letting it swim on and on without tiring. So yeah, dude, they're making him sound like a total badass, total powerhouse. I hope he's actually like really scary in the game. Maybe he's like a mini boss. Maybe he just bodies us or something like that. So I hope they're not gassing him up too much. I hope he is still pretty darn fire. But I think in competitive, he could be an absolute monster. And I truly hope and think that we're going to be able to trade these Pokemon onto Sword and Shield, please. Next up, we've got Hisuian Growlithe. He's fire and rock. Uh, I think he looks okay. I'm not the biggest fan, but um, fire rock is also really poor typing. Quad weak to water and ground, but I mean, it's cool typing. Soft fur, stony horn. This is Growlithe as it appears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Hisuian reform, has longer, more voluminous fur than the previously discovered form of Growlithe. This soft head retaining fur helps the Pokemon thrive, even in the frigid Hisui region. Okay, adapting. Okay. Uh, Darwin, where are you at? The sharp horn on its head is made of rock, but it breaks easily. So Hisui and Growlithe uses it only when it'll have the greatest effect. Makes it sound like a, like a bee, you know, like the bee wants to sting, but then he like loses his sting and he dies or whatever. So, okay, he's gonna be selective with his horn usage. A wary Pokemon that guards its territory with a partner. Hisui and Growlithe are highly vigilant and tend to be seen watching over their territory in pairs. Apparently they have lived apart from humans for a long time and they are unused to being, unused? Is that even a word? Unused to being around people. All right, building trust with the Hisui and Growlithe takes time. Okay, so that's cool. It looks like there might be this kind of thing where the Pokemon have different personalities. They actually did talk about that, uh, you know, testing out their temperament or whatever. So I guess they're giving us a little bit of a taste of the temperament of Hisui and Growlithe. And then we've got Hisuian Braviary Psychic Flying 5-7 King. Where are you at? Um, yeah, I mean, I think he looks pretty cool. He doesn't really look that different, but he does give me this like Wind Waker kind of vibe with that purpley blue magic on his head. But uh, let's read about him. Solitary bird that flies in from the north in winter. When Rufflet in the Hisui region evolved, they become Hisui. Okay. In the winter, this Pokemon flies in from somewhere farther north. It's larger than the previously discovered form of Braviary and tends to live alone rather than in flocks. I think this actually sounds cool. It might give us a little piece of info that the seasons will change depending on time or day during the uh, game. And then maybe like you can't find Braviary unless you are up north in the winter or if you come down south in the summer. I think it's the opposite of that, my bad. But uh, yeah, that'd be cool if like you Pokemon appear depending on the season, depending on the time. Um, man, this game could be so deep and so cool. I really hope they, I really hope they kill it, man. But Shockwave and Psychic Power uh, can imbue its eerie screeches with Psychic Power to generate powerful Shockwaves. It then uses its sharp talents to tear at and seize prey weakened by these shockwaves. Apparently, it can also use its psychic power to sharpen its sixth sense and enter a trance that boosts its physical ability. So maybe that's a new ability. Like it goes sicko mode. That, that's probably what the ability is called. I hope I don't get in trouble for leaking that. But um, yeah, like that actually sounds cool. Maybe it goes like berserk or maybe it has the ability of berserk. Who knows? But it says physical ability. So it's like a physical psychic type. Pretty cool. We don't usually see that too often. But uh, yeah, dude, um, Braviary looks hype. I wanted to talk about the competitive Pokemon, the ones that we can hopefully trade over first, but um, yeah, let's go into how we kind of seek out the Pokemon first. It says Pokemon live freely in all kinds of places, grassy fields, forests, out in the water, name a few. There may be certain Pokemon behaviors or even entire species that you witness only under the right conditions, such as during a particular time of day or in certain kinds of weather. So I guess I should have read this first before this last part, but yeah, it looks like there is definitely all these like variables as to how Pokemon appear and how they act with you, which I think is really cool. Looks like it's going to be pretty deep. Let's go over to observe here. Wild Pokemon will react to you in different ways, depending on the species. That's what they just said. Some may come right at you and attack, while others may run away as soon as they spot you. Tailoring your approach to these Pokemon dispositions will be the key to successfully catching them. So really cool. There's going to be this really cool dynamic of approaching Pokemon and all that good stuff. Battle can be a critical step in catching some wild Pokemon. Pokemon become easier to catch after they've been weakened in battle. Of course, that's nothing new in the Pokemon universe for sure. And then uh, you can try to catch Pokemon by throwing Pokeballs at them. When you find a Pokemon that you want to catch, get close to it and try to catch it with a Pokeball. Aim carefully at your target. That's cool that we get to aim instead of just clicking A like in the, you know, normal main series games, you know what I'm saying? 
um, and hit it with your ball before you miss the opportunity. If the wild Pokemon doesn't pop right back out of the Pokeball when you hit it, then you've done it. That's a successful catch. So nothing crazy here, but um, cool. It, it's cool just to learn about all this stuff. There's actually a lot to digest here, so I'm gonna try to kind of go through it pretty fast, but it says uh, how to start a battle with a Pokemon. You, When you throw a Pokeball with your Pokemon out, that's when the battle starts. So it's cool that you can choose when you wanna actually start these battles. And then it talks about how there's like a different flow to the battles of prior. They kind of showed it in the trailer where depending on your agile or strong style moves, you might be able to get more turns in. It's not just like one turn, one turn, one turn, one turn back and forth. Um, yeah, you can actually control that depending on your agile move, which is faster, may get more turns, but it's weaker. Or the strong style, you move slower, but you do more damage. So honestly, you know, reading about this combat system isn't quite as, you know, interesting as truly experiencing it, but it's gonna be different. And um, it sounds like a lot of fun. Then they go over completing the Pokedex, which honestly sounds like a lot cooler than in these normal games just because of the, you know, exploration, you know, element to it and the fact that you're kind of like, you know, carving out this region, you know, by working with the professor and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, seems a lot cooler than usual. They go over the base camps where, you know, you can heal and hang out and then it says you can craft items and all that good stuff at these base camps and, uh, you know, make different kinds of Pokeballs with Apricorns. I really like that detail, keeping it true to the game and I'm sure there's lots and lots of other stuff that we can craft as well. They go over the Pokeballs, the Smoke Balls that probably disorient them to a bit, stealthily approach Pokemon with no obstacles, all that good stuff. So you can get closer to them with the Smoke Balls, Heavy Balls are more effective at catching Pokemon that haven't noticed you yet. They're heavier, so they don't fly very far. Okay, so you want to sneak up with the smoke bomb, throw the heavy ball, and uh, okay, so this is cool. It's getting really, really uh, deep. Lots of different strategies and stuff. So lots of different gameplay things to go over there, but then they go into the Jubilife Village, which is so cool because obviously Jubilife City is the huge city in Diamond and Pearl in the Sinnoh region, excuse me, but you know, Going back in time, it was just a village, right? And uh, they go, you may know it well, Mount Coronet, lots of different uh, fields, vegetation, all that cool stuff. The game looks beautiful, I think. I think the texturing, you know, is a little bit weird, a little rough around the edges. I hope they do clear the, clean that up a little bit more, but I mean, ugh, it looks it looks really, really cool. Um, and then, yeah, it talks about the base of operations, Jubilife Village, and the Galaxy Expedition Team. So this is like before Team Galaxy became evil, and then you can obviously see this girl. Um, do they talk about her here? Main character, uh, let me scroll down. Yeah, her. Captain Silene. This girl's obviously gotta be related to Cyrus. They look similar. Pale, blue hair, cheekbones, all that jazz. And so, maybe we're gonna see the team turn evil as we progress through this team, and Captain Silene maybe the overthrows the galaxy expedition. I don't know, but um, pretty cool that how much lore they can you know fit in. And then Kamado, Commander Kamado, he's definitely got the same kind of mustache and hair as Professor Rowan. I said he looks like Chuck, which um, still kind of true, but I mean he's got to be you know connected to Rowan. He's the boss of the galaxy team. The Professor Laventon. I don't know, man. This guy, this guy looks kind of sus. Not gonna cap. Um, but yeah, he's the one who wants to complete the Pokedex. So uh, another character there. And then they talk about the main character here, protagonist. Yada, yada. Not do anything crazy here, but Don and Ethan. And then, uh, yeah, it says we'll serve as a base for surveying missions, of course. Requests, assignments, you know, quests and stuff like that. Yeah, so it seems like the game's gonna progress through quests. Uh, you know, no gym badges, not that normal formula, but I'm sure we can run around and explore as much as we want freely. It definitely seems like a, you know, open world game, right? Well, guys, that's pretty much gonna do it for the brunt of all this info that we had on the website. For Legends Arceus and Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, I am beyond excited for this winter season with all of these cool games coming out and uh, just so much more content is coming from here on Twitch and on YouTube. And I just can't wait to have some fun with you guys. So guys, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Really would mean the world to your boy. Drop a comment and like, it helps. It helps the algorithm, it helps us grow. Small channel, baby, but with that, homies, I'll see you guys next time.